Hello everyone and welcome to the very first Play Better Paintball YouTube video. My name is Ben and I took an 18 year hiatus from paintball, came back this year, but I brought with me some skills and expertise that I think is going to be really valuable to the paintball community. So even though this is my very first video, you probably don't know who I am. I promise you that your like and your follow, your subscription to this channel will be very much appreciated and worth your time. Now, I'm not the best video editor. This is not gonna be the most exciting video you've ever seen, but I promise I'm going to get better with each video that, put, that I put out, and the information that I give you will be valuable and help you play better paintball. Now, in regards to that whole brand name of Play Better Paintball, I don't want to come off or misrepresent myself as a professional paintball player. That's not what I am, but I can help you play better paintball because my expertise in fitness are going to help you train your body to do the things that paintball requires, that playing at the high level of paintball in particular requires. Now, just because you may not ever want to or currently play at a high level doesn't mean that you can't benefit from the information that I have for you. A lot of you might be older people who just want to play woods ball, but as anyone over the age of 30 like myself knows, I'm only a few years away from 40, the older we get, the harder it is to keep our athleticism, to keep our physical ability to do the things that we love. And I'm here to tell you that no matter what age you are, there is room for improvement and I'm going to show you how to do that. That being said, comment and ask specific questions. If you want to hear something specific to your situation, I promise I can help you. I have helped a number of people rehabilitate injuries from as low as the foot to as high as the neck. So I'm not a doctor, obviously, but I promise you, if you have been cleared by physical therapy or by your surgeon to go and start doing a certain form of exercise, I can help guide you on what to do next. Once you have completed the therapy, the exercises that you've been recommended, that your body is ready for, I can help guide you what is next, what's safe to progress to. And that is very crucial, that you are constantly progressing. That goes to anyone out there, no matter what your ability level. If you are not trying to improve, you're losing what you have. That's the way our bodies work. That's what atrophy is. So it's very important to be constantly training for something whether that's just to maintain what you have, maybe you already have a pretty high level of fitness, you want to be keeping that and working to keep it. And that involves a combination of resistance training, flexibility training, cardiovascular, cardiorespiratory training, and what's called neuromotor training. Neuromotor is kind of the ability for our bodies to be self-aware of where our body is in space and to coordinate movements, to balance ourselves in different positions. So there's basically four dimensions of fitness. I'm gonna be telling you how to apply training in each of those dimensions to the sport of paintball. So with that being said, this is my first video. Uh, again, I took an 18 year break. I came back and I recorded myself doing some drills that as a now professional strength and conditioning coach, I thought was a very good way to start getting back into the sport of paintball. And I'm going to describe why I think it's really important to do the things I did in this video while I'm on the field and doing that, but I'm going to commentate some of the parts that I can't film myself or record myself um, speaking while filming on site. I'm a one-man show, I'm trying to do this all by myself, so that's why the video production is not going to be a professional videographer's quality. The filming is not going to look as good as some people who, who specialize in photography or things like that. So uh, I'm doing my best here, but I promise I'm going to deliver value to you so that you can help your body play better paintball. Sorry for the long introduction, but again, I'm trying to make sure you know who I am and why you should follow, subscribe, like this video, etc. Let's get right into it. I'm going to watch the video of me doing this warm up that I did before I went and played. And I'm gonna be explaining to you why I did the things that I did 
what it is I'm doing and how you can apply what I'm doing here to your own warm up the next time you go play paintball. Alright guys, we are here at Apocalypse Paintball and I'm getting ready to play airball for the first time since 2004. I'm only a few years from 40 years old, so everyone should already do this, but I especially need to do a good warm up before I start playing. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to warm up for today's playing. Okay, so this was the warm up that I did about a month ago when I went to play paintball on an airball field for the first time in a very long time. There ended up being a lot of goose poop on the ground, so some of these stretches are intentionally so that I have as little likelihood as possible of getting myself in some goose poop. You can see me knocking it on the ground, but I just start by simply bending over and stretching both hamstrings. And when you're warming up for something, you want it to be a what's called dynamic stretch. You don't want to just hold a stretch for 30 to 60 seconds like you do after you work out. So I'm kind of moving pretty quickly here. So I'm holding, only holding these for five to 10 seconds on each side. If one side is a little bit stiffer, I'll hang out on that side more. But I simply bent over and stretched both hamstrings. Then I staggered my stance, bent over and stretched one side, then switched legs to the other side. Now I'm kind of moving through a squat and then standing up. So I'm just doing the same stretch that I started with, stretching both hamstrings, but starting to warm my quads up by sinking down to a squat, standing back up. Now I'm going back to that same staggered stance, hamstring stretch, but adding a little bit of rotation. When you start twisting your trunk a little bit, you're gonna feel the stretch differently. So that's what I'm doing. We do a lot of leaning and twisting and paintball. So it's important in your warm up to get your muscles exposed to that twisting, to that leaning. Here I'm warming up the inside of my legs, what are called the adductors or the groin muscles. So I'm easing my way into a deeper and deeper side lunge, essentially. I'm going to eventually get here into a Kozak squat, which is a really good movement. You can look it up if you'd like to know exactly what that is, but I'm, I'm not just jumping into it. I am easing my way into this because this is relatively early in the morning. My body hasn't been moving that much. So I want to get all the muscles moving, loose, ready to at a moment's notice, hop into a small bunker where I have to get really tight or explode sideways so that I can skip from one bunker to the next. I'm trying to predict all the movements that I'm going to be doing that day and get the muscles that perform those movements ready to go. So you can now see I'm starting to sink into a, a deep squat on each side. So one side at a time. So again, my quad muscles are getting warmed up by doing this. My groin muscles are loosening up. So I'm just going back and forth, making sure that as much around my hips is as loose as possible. So here we're in a runner's lunge. And this is an outstanding stretch. Some people call it the world's greatest stretch, but it is very good. And I would say every time you go play paintball, this is one you should absolutely do. Um, so what I do to kind of progress it is again, twist a little bit more as I go to each side. I'm only spending five to 10 seconds on each side. So I'm just adding a little bit more rotation, just trying to feel my whole body moving, twisting, feeling every range of motion possible from these positions. This is um, plank to pike, which is a big part of my paintball fitness programs that I have come out with. You can learn more about those on my website, playbetterpaintball.com. But awesome stretch to kind of both activate your muscles in this plank position and then stretch the muscles in this downward dog position. So that's actually stretching the calves, the hamstrings, um, while also activating things like your upper body, your shoulders. So we're turning a lot of things on and stretching things at the same time. Love that movement. We're back in the squat here, twisting, feeling myself loosening up. So uh, we are just we're, we're getting pretty warm here. I'm almost done. I'm like, all right, I'm feeling very loose, active, ready to go. That's it. I don't think that was even five minutes, but I feel so much looser, ready to play. So that's going to make us safe on the field and help us play better. That's what we're here for. Play better paintball. So while I was at my local field this day, I only got to play a couple games and I'll keep the, the reason, the story short. You can go to my TikTok to find the kind of the full reason as to why I wasn't able to play very much. But to your benefit, I was able to do a lot more filming because everyone left. There was no more people to play with. 
So I was able to use the field for filming. And so that's what I did was hop on the field. And um, before they deflated the air ball field, they always deflate the field after they're done using it, but they left it up for me so that I could do some drills, do some practices. So they were kind enough to let me do some filming. And so you're going to see me doing some dives and some shooting drills. And I'll kind of explain why it is I'm doing what I'm doing on camera um, in between the different moves and the drills. So I kind of have to come to the camera to speak, but then leave the camera for the drill. So there's going to be a little bit of downtime here, but hopefully um, you'll be patient and you can obviously skip around in the video navigation below to get to a part where you might want to hear what it is I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But um, that being said, let's get into my first drills of the day, which was practicing diving. I was a front player back in the day. I am uh, 37 years old now, so I wanted to see how good am I at diving after all this time away. So let's get on the field and check out how I did. So we are not currently playing right now. They're just, they're debating deflating the field because no one's really out here. So I haven't gotten to play a single game with the exclusive speedball attorney guys, but you guys have asked for some dives. I said I'd do it. So I'm gonna get those on film. I haven't done a single dive today. So I have no idea how well this ground is gonna slide. My guess is it's not gonna be super slick, but hopefully we'll get some good footage. Here we go. So that one didn't feel too bad. It slid pretty well, didn't, didn't, didn't wanna do on the belly quite yet. But now that I've felt it, it feels okay. So we'll try a belly slide, see how that goes. That one felt pretty good. Not bad for a 37 year old dude who hasn't played since 2004. On an airball field anyway. Uh, so let's do some left-handed ones. See how I can do holding the gun in my left hand. I think the lighting in this angle might be a little bit better than the last one, but I am right-handed, so running with my gun in the left hand this is a little weird, but the, the only thing that I'm having to be careful of is it's so hot and humid that my knees are so sweaty, my knee pads are sliding down after I slide, even though I have pants on. So you gotta be careful. Make sure if you're gonna slide, your knee pads are in place and you have good pads. We'll talk about that one some other time. Ooh, that last one definitely felt ugly. It's like the, so I play basketball and if you can relate, when you're trying to shoot a left-handed layup, when you're a right-handed player, you're trying to jump off your right leg instead of your left. And that's what that was kind of like. It was like, ooh, the timing of these steps is not right. I'm one leg off. So I dove on the leg I'm not used to diving on, but it went okay. Uh, I'm going to try to catch my breath and do one more. It's hot out. So pause real quick. That that dive actually kind of hurt a little bit. Um, it was so awkward trying to run with my left hand because as an analogy to kind of help explain why it feels so weird, if you're a right-handed player, you're used to doing a right-handed uh, layup in basketball. You kind of feel the tempo naturally of like, okay, this many steps until I jump, jump off my left foot, I do the layup with my right hand, easy peasy. 
But as soon as that same player tries to go left-handed, when they haven't practiced it a whole lot, it's like, wow, this feels clunky because I'm holding the ball in my non-dominant hand. I'm, apparently I'm supposed to jump off my right foot because otherwise it doesn't feel right to jump off your left while holding the ball in your left hand. So very similar feeling trying to time which leg I jump off of into my dive while holding the gun in my left hand, needing to kind of launch off of my right foot. Did not feel good at all. I didn't have high expectations. I actually am happy with the way my dives went when I was at the field this day, but uh, definitely need a lot of practice before I tried to go out and just play a tournament or something and be like, I'm just gonna run with my gun in my left hand and try to do a left-handed dive. I would, if I had to play a tournament tomorrow, just run with the gun in my right hand, pretend I'm diving into a right-handed uh, bunker. So yeah, it it did not go well. I had a little bit of a headache from how much impact that dive had, but I'm fine. Everything was fine. I didn't break anything on my gun, but yeah, it, it hurt a little bit. So if you have not practiced specifically going off your non-dominant side into a dive, I would not recommend it. Just FYI, take it nice and slow practice um, the steps it takes to get to where you're about to jump and then slowly uh, probably not dive at first but maybe run and just practice jumping vertically uh, instead of into the bunker and then start you know diving carefully by kind of just landing on your arms and getting into a kind of a plank or crawl position and then start adding some speed to it um, but without the gun uh, you want to have both hands to kind of support yourself and help you land a little bit softer. Then after, you know, a few minutes or maybe even it takes you a few days of drilling this to get comfortable, but then I would start adding the gun in your hand and practice uh, diving with the gun in your non-dominant hand, jumping off the non-dominant foot and doing the dive that way. I would not just jump right in like I did today, but I'm relatively healthy for my age. My body's in pretty good shape compared to the average 37 year old. So I felt very safe doing this and I was, it just wasn't pretty. So hope you enjoyed uh, my clunky left-handed dive there, but let's get back to the video. Man, I underestimated just how wonky that feels trying to run with good left hand form instead of holding it in your right hand and running the exact same way you would to a bunker on the right side of the field. So definitely need to practice that. Uh, well, once again, not bad for a 37 year old who hasn't played in 18 years. So um, it is hot and I'm tempted to go in the shade, but I gotta use the field before they deflate it. Um, so I'm gonna do some shooting drills and show you guys what I think you should be doing if you are not hitting the target at least half the time that you're doing your snap shooting. Basically, if you practice fast and you're not accurate while you're fast, you're not gonna get accurate by just continuing to practice at fast speed. You need to practice slower, develop that muscle memory, that hand-eye coordination and set this up here so that you're actually getting better. You start hitting that target every time preferably, but at least half the time, and then speed up a little bit. You're probably gonna miss a little more frequently, get to where you're hitting it half or more of the time, then speed up again. Don't just, don't just start your drills at full speed. You have to slow down and find the muscle movement, amount, and, oh, what's a good word? The amount and the intensity of the movement required to get out, make the shot, and come back. If you're going at full speed, you're never gonna accurately assess how much do I actually need to come out, how much do I need to come in, where is my barrel pointed. If you're doing it super fast, you have no idea. You're just coming out and coming back in. Second thing, don't just uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Nobody's bouncing in paintball. You're not bouncing in, bouncing out, and just doing this. You're waiting, you're going in when you see paint coming. You wait for it to stop. So practice, spur of the moment, split decision, realizing it's time to go, I'm clear. 
So practice coming out, back in, stop, out, back in, stop. Preferably with a teammate telling you when to go instead of you predicting when to go in your brain. So with those two things in mind, here's my first drill. Short range, slow motion. Yeah, that's so weird. I'm having to pull the trigger like two or three times before it shoots. So, it says I have 1500 PSI. Could be that my batteries and the gun are dying. So, I'm just gonna get by while I can because I might end up changing the batteries and then the field going down. So, just in case it happens, I'm just gonna deal with what it's doing. So another pause real quick. Uh, weeks later, I have since found out that uh, what was going on with my gun is actually the comp the capacitor on the ion board is failing. Um, and now it's gotten to the point where it will hold no charge at all so the gun won't fire. So that's what was actually starting to happen on the field. I've been playing with this ion all summer. It's my old ion that I bought actually after I quit playing paintball, but I was like, I'm gonna start playing again. These ions are super cool. I'm gonna get one. So I actually bought that around 2006 and I've just been hauling it around with me along with my old impulse, knowing I'm gonna get back into paintball at some point and year after year, move after move, I had not done it. But finally this year, I am back. But the, the ion did very well all summer. I absolutely love it. Um, but the capacitor being an old board, it did finally start to fail. So I'm hoping I can fix it myself. I've got one on the way. Um, but that's what's happening in this video. So if you notice that I'm kind of like delayed and firing off any shots, that's what's going on. Another thing I want to point out here is that I reflexively got into this kneeling position, shooting right handed with my right knee on the ground. And I very quickly realized, ooh, I can't actually move very well from this position. So I want you to notice how I switch right here to my left leg being the one I'm kneeling on. Um, is that right? Sorry, I said that wrong. So I'm shooting right-handed. I, I went down to kneel on my left side, which left my right knee hanging out a lot, but also just did not feel like a very powerful position. I did not feel comfortable. And I quickly realized I am kneeling on the wrong foot. So for anyone out there who may not be aware that they're doing this, when you're shooting right-handed, try to kneel on your right foot you will feel way more stable and be able to lean a lot easier by doing that. Um, so that little switch right here that you see, that's what was going on there. And that's something to keep in mind for yourself the next time you are in a kneeling position, leaning out the right side or the left side. That's the third thing. Don't just do one shot at a time. You never do that playing paintball. You always shoot multiple shots. So go ahead and practice like you play. Shoot multiple shots. So that was roughly 10 shots, shooting about three balls each time, almost all the time when I'm hit. One time, I think I made like a perfect circle around the target, but um, one of the things that I'm having to get used to coming back after not playing in a while is how far out do I have to go from my barrel to clear the bunker? Because I'm shooting a lot of shots off of the edge of the bunker. So that's just one of those things that having not played in a long time, you gotta get used to and kind of find that muscle memory, you know, figure out just how far out you gotta go, remember how far that was, get there accurately each time and again all the more reason to go slower when you are doing your drills make sure at slow speed you're accurate then medium speed you're accurate then about 75 percent speed accurate and then 100 percent speed so i'm gonna switch bunkers rather than move the target because i can just move to a bunker a little easier so uh, i think you can see me I'm about right here it's very bright out this camera's not easy to see the screen in the bright sunlight, but I think you can see me from here. So.
All right, I've been practicing right-handed, and I realize now I should have uh, switched to some left-handed shots before actually backing up, but for the sake of expediting this filming process, we're just gonna go right in some left-handed from this distance. This is a reasonable distance. It's only about 10 yards at most further back from the first target, so I'm not losing that much practice by starting a little bit further back. Need to reload. So you can probably tell there, I started kind of slow hanging out of the bunker um, rather than like popping right back in because I wanted to make sure I was watching where my balls are going. Figure out how I need to change. This paint I just put in is absolute crap. So this is probably the farthest I'll be able to uh, shoot today because after a certain maybe 30 yards, this stuff just starts going. Whew, whew. It's the HK Army. Uh, not their lowest level, but it's like the next level. It might be their lowest level. Premium, select, performance, something like that. I did a TikTok about it, so you can go back and watch that video. So got a little bit of the Defy tournament in here. So that's shooting pretty well today. I'm impressed. I'll probably try that again after I try some of the other brands you recommended. Ah, well, let's go back to some drills. Here comes the HP Army. The blue Defy stuff just finished. Hopefully you can see some of those just absolutely whiff. Some of them go down, and then some go up, some go right, left. It's kind of crazy. All right, let's get, get a little different angle. Play out a little bit different bunker. Um, I'm gonna try some shooting out of like something really shallow, like you're playing in the snake. Let's go set that up. Whew, it's hot. All right, still recording. I'm gonna try some right-handed shots laying in the snake, or what I'm gonna call the snake for the sake of this drill. And I'll do some left-handed out of there. See how that goes. So when you're playing like that and you're basically laying with one knee in kind of pigeon pose, you can Google that if you don't know what I'm talking about, but you're laying with your knee bent underneath you to support you. When you're in the bottom position, you can rest on your elbow to make sure you're not expending more energy than necessary to stay down while you're waiting for your shot. Um, but as you noticed, I started really slow, kind of made sure I'm watching the target, watching where my balls are going before I speed up coming back down. Once I was confident that I'm hitting that target, at least every shot, one of those three balls. That's when I started speeding up a little bit. So, felt like that one good, but let's try left-handed. 
That's always a different story. such a good reason to practice both hands um, both both sides in every kind of bunker because it feels so foreign for me to be like that left-handed but the more you practice it the more comfortable it becomes and therefore in a game if you need to play either side of the field for your team to have the advantage you're ready for it so let's go back to stage and cool down a little bit get some water I think it's safe to take my mask off all the people playing are pretty far away you can probably hear in the background though so one of the things no one I've seen talk about when playing paintball at a certain age is the eyesight, the loss of eyesight. And that is the first thing I probably noticed coming back and playing a few months ago um, was I have trouble seeing exactly where I'm shooting past a certain distance. I can't tell if my balls are short, long, left, right. Um, mostly the short and long, that's the hardest thing. So. That's something I'm gonna drill today since I've got the field to myself now. I don't need it to be inflated to play. It sucks that they had to deflate it and I can't play any games, but this is an opportunity for me to practice so that hopefully in the future, I have at least a little bit more accuracy in assessing how far I'm shooting, how I need to adjust. So I'm basically gonna do a drill where I act like I'm off the break shooting um, that target. You may or may not be able to see it way down at the other end of the field, but hopefully, if you're on a big enough screen you can see but I'm gonna drill just nice and slow shooting off the brake standing still once I feel like I'm starting to hit it relatively um, frequently then I'll start speeding up and trying to move a little bit so starting slow and building in speed building um, in the amount of movement I'm doing that sort of thing just starting slow and carefully building so that I'm not just um, going so fast that I'm missing a layer of foundation for me to be accurate at full speed. So let's get to it. It's so bright out here, I can't see the light on my gun if it's on or not. There we go. Ah, my gun's doing the thing. Or it's only firing after like one or two shots. So maybe it's not a battery, maybe it's something else. I took a lot of shots to get a hit on the target. It is bad paint, but it's not doing that bad. I think I'm aiming slightly low. Let's go ahead and pop off. I must have had a break in one of my pods because my paint is covered in liquid paint. I thought down I was aiming too high and had to lower it down. I did not expect this to go well, but I didn't know it would be this bad, but that's why we're here, is to drill it. I think I'm overshooting it, going over the top. I didn't 
I didn't necessarily plan on doing this, but I did notice after about eight or ten balls, whatever, it's actually, I kind of need to stop and wait to see where that paint's landing because it's kind of hard to see if the paint's hitting after they listen for it. So that's why I'm stopping after every eight or ten balls. Seems weird that all of my pods would have a busted paintball in them. I feel like they're actually sweating. I think it might be so hot that they're expanding so much that the liquid is coming out of the shell just from it separating at the seam or something. So that was a little better. It's so defeating seeing all these balls going at the target, but none of them hitting. Let's see, I got one pod left. I haven't even gone left hand yet. So I'm shooting so bad right handed. That pod was clean. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I think I think the, the HK Army paint is so hot that it's separating because I can see liquid around the seam of the ball. So come on, HK. That was better. I was a little bit short, but I'm starting to add some movement since I'm getting more accurate standing still. I don't know, well, I might have been standing in the way, but it's almost like these balls are actually spiraling as they shoot. They're going warm. So, I guess I can't beat myself too much for missing. And the compressor is off on this uh, side of Apocalypse. So, unfortunately, I tried to fill up before they took the compressor down. And on the gauge of the filler, it said I was at 4,500 PSI, but the tank was not. So that was a mistake on my part, not being familiar with their compressor on this side. So, looks like my drills are done. And I do have a leak inside.
It's at the macro fitting. But something's going on with the gun. Uh, at least I was able to get some drills done. So hopefully I can figure out at home what's going on with the gun. But I'd say today was successful. I was able to get some diving in, some shooting drills from different uh, bunkers, different stances. So that was all really good. Got to play a couple games on the airball field, which is way less than I wanted to, but as I've said, I am very fortunate, very blessed to be out here and have this opportunity. So I'm just thankful that I got to knock a little bit of rust off, but still a lot more to go. So thanks for watching. Play better paintball, you guys. I think that sums it up pretty well. I was able to knock some rust off, but there's still a lot of rust left to go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I do want to just quickly kind of summarize the whole idea behind what I did today because that's me bringing my expertise from strength and conditioning to the world of paintball. Again, I'm not a professional paintball player, so trying to come to me as a resource for what kind of drills are going to make me better, what kind of drills should I do given the level of uh, advanced or intermediate or beginner that I am, those are questions for professional paintball players. But as a strength and conditioning coach who understands how the body adapts to training, the overall idea behind everything I did today was start slow. Um, with the exception of the dies, which I just dove right in, right? Um, but that was really just all about fun and kind of like seeing what I could do while still being safe and kind of showing out to, to some people on TikTok who were like, what can you do, old man? So with the exception of that, all these drills were following the entire idea behind how the human body um, begins to improve. You have to start slow. You can't just jump right in going full speed. You have to ingrain the right pattern, the right movement, a highly accurate movement, nice and slow into the body. And then once that pattern is how you need it to be, you're moving accurately, you're doing the movement correctly, whatever it may be, then you start building speed. Because if you kind of imagine the brain is really not that different than a computer and you're kind of manually writing a new program into the muscles that the brain computes. So you're essentially telling the body, stop moving this way and start moving this way. And those muscles have to relearn the movement. Like, okay, you want us to do what now? Okay, that, got it. Okay, now we're doing it and we're doing it accurately each time. Now let's go faster, now let's go faster. That's the theory behind all of this training is start nice and slow, start nice and easy. Don't just jump in full speed doing all these um, high speed, uh, full pace, drills that I see a lot on Instagram where young kids are just coming out and immediately doing these fast drills. You're not going to ingrain accuracy. You have to start slow and then gradually increase the speed. And sometimes you're not gonna be able to go full speed on the very day that you did a new drill. You're gonna have to realize and be humble that, man, I'm actually, I'm missing this target every time I come out at this speed. And let's say that speed was about 75% of what you think your full speed is. Well, let's back it down to 50 and go 50% speed. And once you start getting accurate, then bump up to 75, you're gonna be a little less accurate. Work on that speed at 75, then bump up to 85, 90, and then 100%. So get accurate slowly before building in speed. That's the whole idea behind today. I hope you enjoy the drills. I hope you can apply some of the strength and conditioning theory to your own training. And if you have questions about specific things related to your own personal body, whether it's an injury or something you recognize you need to improve in yourself, maybe it's your stamina on the field and you're like, how can I get my body to not be so out of breath after I run to my bunker off the break? Uh, maybe you're completely distracted by how out of breath you are that you're not able to enjoy your paintball game. Uh, maybe you just feel really weak when you play paintball. You feel brittle after you're done and you're like, man, I can't walk really well for like a day or two after I play. What can I do to kind of recover faster and make my body more resilient when I go play? Ask me those kinds of questions. I am here to answer them. Um, I, I look forward to bringing you as much help and expertise as I can to help you play better paintball. Thanks again, guys.